A Rat Holding a Voodoo Doll Cat Acrylic Painting Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. So I already have the painting sketched out on my canvas, so I'm going to begin with painting dark green all around it and just filling in that background. And this dark green that I'm using, it's not nearly as opaque as I'd prefer. So I ended up doing about three coats of it, and then at this point it looks almost black. And then I'm going to take some charcoal paint and I'm going to start filling in my rat, and I'm going to be filling in anywhere that has fur. So basically that's the entire rat except for his eyes, ears, um, hands, and tail, and feet. But I'm just going to fill in all of this with charcoal. I don't know if I said teeth before. You don't fill in his teeth either. They're not hairy. At least I hope not. Anyways, and I'm just going to fill him in. But I am going to uh, pay attention to where like all the lines are and paint each section separately. Because you can still see the lines in a little bit once you are past that point And it makes it a little easier. So I'm going to paint his eyes with red starting out with. So just fill in them with red and then add some burgundy and black to shade around them. And a highlight with white. So now I'm going to start doing all of the hair texture and I began with just filling in his nose just to have that in place and I'm using sort of a grayish or a gray brown to do this and so I'm going to start around his around his little cheeks and then start working my way out fanning my way out and doing the hair texture I know it seems maybe like it's a huge undertaking and that it's super difficult it really isn't it does take some practice um, to get it uh, especially if you're going to try to do it fast but the main thing to keep in mind is that you want to use just a minimal amount of paint on your brush just so that you don't get a huge glob where you don't want it and also to make sure that the main thing with doing the hair texture or the fur texture is the direction that the hair is going so you need to look at a photo to see what directions all of the hair goes because especially over the planes of his face it changes continually so it goes straight up his face from his nose and then it comes down more like around his cheeks and doing all that is really the most important thing for making the hair look believable is what direction it's going. And so then I'm also going to fill in his chin and then I'm going to start and I'm going to add hair to the rest of him. And as I said, use short little strokes. However, right around his nose and up like the bridge of his nose and his cheeks are going to be the finest hair. So it's going to be the shortest strokes and the smallest lines, the thinnest lines. As you get farther and farther out, your lines are going to or they can get thicker and they can get longer and my rat in particular I want him to look like he's a little fluffy almost like he's not super sleek he's got kind of a unruly mess of hair going on and so I'm going to just make my lines thicker and longer is really all that you have to do to do that and so also that's going to be a really good differentiating point between his head and like his chest right there is because the line the strokes are so different that you can see them and they're really not different it's not like a whole separate technique that you have to figure out it's just how they're applied so the same thing with the legs and the arms just add those and then also once you start getting towards his hands you're going to want to make the strokes a little smaller make that hair a little finer as well but for the most part, the rest of him, it's going to take about the same amount of time as his face just because the lines are so much bigger that you can cover the same amount of area significantly faster. And then I'm going to fill in his last arm and that's it for the hair texture. So now I'm going to take some black paint that's very diluted and I'm going to start shading around him. And so I'm going to be adding sort of a wrinkled nose and then I'm going to define his brow and around his arms and around his legs and around his head. Add another layer of that just to deepen the deep in the shadows and then I'm going to do the same thing with highlighting so I'm using diluted white and I'm going to highlight all the high points on his face and on his body so I'm just brushing that on and then I like to use my fingertip to sort of blend it out a little bit um, you can just use the brush if that's how you like to do it now I'm going to be adding the details to his nose which is pretty simple I'm just going to sort of blend in some mauve to make his nose look a little bit warmer of a color and the same thing on his ears I'm going to start with that gray brown color and then blend in some white some black and some of that mauve or pink just so that he has a little bit of color in his ears all of those more skin type areas and then I'm going to be filling in his teeth with sort of a yellowish light yellow brown color and then I'm going to be adding a little bit of white to highlight the tips of the teeth and a little bit of black at the base of each tooth just to give it a slight shadow And so now I'm going to begin working on the rat trap. 
So I'm going to start with a light cream and I'm just gonna fill in the top and then on the sides I'm gonna add that light cream but then I'm gonna blend in some charcoal just to add that shadow on there. So I'm do that on the two sides of it that you can see. And then on the top, on the surface, that light cream, I'm gonna take a tan color and I'm gonna be adding the wood grain. The wood grain is very, very similar to zebra print. So if you're familiar with zebra print, it's very similar, like I said. Um, the key here is just to make all kinds of strokes that go together and periodically add in a knot. And you can look at wood grain on anything and hopefully you'll be able to see how the patterns go. And once you have a few of the basic patterns you just have to keep repeating it and so then I did that on the sides as well and then I'm going to be adding I just added a little bit of a shadow around the base of the of the rat trap and then with gray paint I'm going to go through and I'm going to be adding in all of the little metal parts of the rat trap so the springs and then that part that snaps down so that's just to know where it is pretty much at this point and then I'm going to take some purple paint and I'm going to be painting in my little voodoo cat and so I'm just gonna fill him in, except for I'm gonna leave his tummy bare because I know that I'm going to be filling that in with a lighter color later. And then I'm going to be adding another layer of the purple over the top and blending in some white just to highlight it. And I want this whole image to look very, very soft and like he's almost plush looking. And so I don't want it to have any sharp edges or anything. So I'm just going to highlight him nice and gently. And then I'm gonna fill in the cat's tummy with a lavender color at his nose add a little bit of that same color in his ears, and also I'm going to be adding his little paw pads. I'm gonna highlight his tummy a little bit, add some highlights on all of the other lavender areas, just by blending in a little bit of white. And then I'm gonna add all of the stitching on my cat with white paint, and then I'm gonna cover it with red. So I missed a whole bunch of this. My one camera went dead when I was working on it. Um, but what you're doing is the stitching you want to stitch on every single piece. So on his legs, on his tail, on his ears, on his head. And just add the stitching wherever you think it should go. And then I'm going to go through and I also added a needle in his teeth. And I'm going to redefine those lines of the spring and the other wire parts, the metal parts of the trap. And then I'm going to take some black paint that's diluted a little bit. And I'm going to be doing just some basic shadowing on my all that gray metal parts and also a little bit on the stitching as well. I want the stitches to have a nice outline almost to them. So I'm just gonna go through and add a black line to one side of each stitch. That's also gonna make them stand out a lot better. And I'm also going to add a string and then I'm gonna go through with white and I'm going to be highlighting everything. So all those metal parts and the needle and then painting the thread. And I'm gonna cover the thread with red and then for his hands and his feet and his tail, I'm gonna first fill them in with a moth color. I'm just gonna add the first layer. When I paint, I generally speaking, I like to paint in the first layer of color and then let that dry and then do everything else with a second layer. So do all of the details and the shading with a layer on top of that. I find that when you don't do that, when you just when you put down the first layer and then you start blending in your colors to give them the highs and the lows that sometimes it can go all the way through and you end up seeing a lot more of the canvas through but if you add a base layer before that you don't see that and like areas where that dark green is going to show through you're going to have a much better coverage that way and it's just going to give you a better end result so then after that's done i'm going to go through like i said and i'm going to take mauve i'm going to take that same mauve and i'm also going to take some burgundy and some white so i'm going to first paint down the layer of the mauve and then take the burgundy and add the shadows so for his hands i'm going to add the shadows to the to the bottom side of each finger and also a little bit on the finger pit and that's where I'm going to put that and I'm going to highlight with white on the tops of each finger and for his hands and his feet when I'm doing this highlighting and the shadowing I'm doing it with very rough strokes to make his hands look and his hands and feet look like they're almost a little bit wrinkly and not super smooth if that makes sense and so I'm following the same exact processes on his feet just to give him that same texture and appearance And then I'm gonna go through with his tail. So I'm gonna paint down another layer of that mauve paint and then use the burgundy color to add a darker tone on the underside. And I'm going to take same with that burgundy and add little lines that are slightly curved to add the rings on his tail. And then I highlight each, each of those sections between the rings with a little bit of white. Just like so, finish filling in his tail. And his tail is going up and over his feet.
And I'm going to go through with another little bit of white to really define that highlight. So I'm going to dilute some more black paint and I'm going to use it to create shadows on all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to shadow pretty much everything on the lower half of the painting. So the trap, the voodoo doll, his feet, and then add his toenails with black and then add a little highlight on each nail with some white. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this painting and check out my Facebook and Instagram accounts to see more of my art. I don't put a video out for everything. So if you're interested in anything else that I do, check out those and I will see you in my next video. Bye.